Okay. We're looking at seven times the cube root of x to the fourth y to the sixth. Well, the seven stays out there. I should have put it a little more to the left. Put a couple of parentheses around here to make sure the seven doesn't get mixed up with three. Okay. But I can write that as seven times the cube root of x to the fourth times the cube root of y to the sixth. Now we understand the cube root of y to the sixth is y squared. So I know already that I'm going to have a y squared. And the seventh show going to be here. What are we going to do about the cube root of x to the fourth? Well, I can write that as in that three is too close to the seven. But seven times the cube root of x cubed times x. Because x cubed is something I can do a cube root of. X isn't. Well, that gives me then seven times the cube root of x squared times the cube root of x times y squared. Well, I should have put the x in front of the x cubed. Works either way. So that's seven x times the cube root of x times y squared. And what's the cube root of x? You don't know, but everything else comes out here. And then we can change the order of the multiplication and get seven x y times the cube root of x. Okay, now let me give you another one, similar, but not the same. See if you can work it. Okay, let's try. Four times the cube root of X to the 11th. Okay, a couple of stumbling blocks here. And what do we do with that four? Well, this is means four multiplied by this. So the cube root doesn't affect four at all. Matter of fact, I could put parentheses around this and it'd be the same thing. So that four just goes along for the ride. Then we want to write this as four times the cube root of x to the 11th times the cube root of y to the ninth. Okay. Now, what can we do with that? Well, one of those has a cube root that comes out nicely, the other doesn't. What did I do before when I had the cube root of x to the fourth and the cube root of y to the sixth? Okay, I'm um, just getting a little hung up here, so let's just kind of digress and see what we should do over here. Okay, so let's make sure we understand what this cube root thing does. Cube root is something that you multiply by itself three times to get that. Thing. So that y is the cube root. Got a three up there. Cube root of y is a six equals cube root of y squared times y squared times y squared. There are three of these, okay? And if the cube root of something multiplied by itself three times, it's just that thing. This is y squared. Since y squared cubed is y to the sixth. It was y squared cubed means y squared times y squared times y squared. Okay. Which is y times y, y times y, y times y gives you y to the sixth. And I'll just kind of
Okay, so what could you say about cube root of y to the and why is it so? Okay, there's some kind of fundamentals we need to show we understand. Okay, take y to the 15th. I'm sure I want to write all this out, but it be equals y three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, you can write that out. Okay. Now, I can group all these y's any way I want to. So that could equal. This fits about as well as that stupid patio door does. Okay. Uh, okay. So you understand what I did there? I just put parentheses around some of those. Okay. Well, what is this? That's y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth, right? Okay. No, another way I could have grouped them, that could have grouped them evenly in threes. They could have a y cubed, a y cubed, a y cubed, a y cubed, and a y cubed, right? I'd have five y cubed. Okay. Now, what we're trying to find is the cube root of y to the 15th. Okay. If you just think of this string of 15 y's and you group them into three groups. Okay, if you group them into three groups, you can write this. So now we can say the cube root of y to the 15th. Is the cube root of y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth. Now, what's the cube root of eight? It's two. Why? Two times two times two is eight. What's the cube root of 27? It's three. Three times three times three gives you three times nine, which is 27, right? Cube root of 64 is four, because four times four times four is 64. And the cube root of y to the 15th is y to the fifth, because y to the 15th is y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth. Okay. The same reason the cube root of eight is two, the cube root of y to the 15th, or y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth is y to the fifth. Okay, so that equals y to the fifth. Sense. Y to the fifth cube is y to the 15th. Okay. Okay, now over here we've got x to the 11th. What are we going to do with x to the 11th? Well, first of all, x to the 11th equals x times 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 x. Okay, now. I could write that as this. Now that I could group my axes in two, right? In, in, in pairs.
That'd be x squared to the fifth times x, right? I could do that. It's not what I want to do for this problem because I need to find a cube root, right? I was trying to find a square root. Well, I can make another group. I was trying to find a fifth root. I could do that, okay? So if I group these things in pairs, I could do a fifth root and make it a lot simpler. Um, again, because the fifth root of something to the fifth is just that thing. Okay, well, I don't want a fifth root. Okay. If I group it like this, what do I get? How would you write this times this times this times this times this? See if you'd write that out, but using an exponent. Okay, coming along. That, that, that works out pretty well. Okay, so this means we have, first of all, x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. And for wanting to take a cube root, it's nice that we have we do the same thing here. And then times x times x. Of course, that could be written as x squared, but we're not getting another group of three. And we're not going to get groups of four. We don't have enough x's to group them into four groups and, and into three groups of four, right? Okay. So now we could write that as x cubed cubed times x squared. Okay, so there's several steps, but we see from what we've done here that you do in your head after you've done a few of them. If, if you have X to the 86th, you don't want to write them all out in group. Okay, well, we'll do X to the 86th. Okay, we're not going to write them all out. We're going to use a little division. Okay, yeah, you really don't want to write all those out. Uh, they hard to keep count. Okay, uh, so, okay, so by this grouping, we understand that x to the 11th is the cube of x cubed. And then time, well, times x, okay. It's the cube of x cubed times x squared. x to the 11th is this cube times x squared. You lost the exponents tell you that. It tells you that x cubed cubed is x to the ninth. And you multiply x to the ninth by x squared, you got x to the eleventh. Okay. So those rules are good. Make sure you understand where the rules come from and make sure you can take everything back to the most basic definitions. Now I've got a question. Okay. Now, the cube root of x cubed cubed, well, we've got a cube of something. The cube happens to be x cubed, but uh, that just means we got x cubed. Okay. And then we got the cube root. 
The next squared left over. Now let's do cube root of z to the 86 power. Okay. Now, how would you group this so that you get three of the same power, okay? In other words, you get three equal groups. There are many ways you could do it, okay? One way, would be okay. We can group them in z to the six. Take a cube root of z to the six. We wouldn't want to just do that. We call that. Z to the six, how many Z to the six would there be in Z to the 86? We have to do a little arithmetic, but what would you do to figure that out? Fourteen? Yeah, good arithmetic. Two, I think. Because six goes into 84, 14 times, right? Okay. Well, let's make sure we understand this. Uh, make sure everybody's on, on track with this. Okay, we had good arithmetic there. We have z to the 86 equals how many z to the sixths? Well, if you imagine there are 86 of these and we're grouping them in sixes, well, if you divide 86 by six, you get 14 with two left over. That tells us. That we have z to the six 14 times, and then we have z squared, right? Okay, well, that's one way we could group it. But what we really want to do, well, what do you get if you divide 86 by three? 28. Okay, well, let me pause this a second. Okay, so when we do this, if z to the 6 to the 14th times z squared, we get z to the 6 to the 14th times z squared. It's not what we want if we want to do a cube root. If we want to do a 14th root, that would be a good way to do it. Okay, uh, we get this because 6 times 14 is 84. We got six z's here, and then we got 14 groups. So we got 6 times 14 z's that we'd have to write out. I would have 14 groups of six, that'd be a total of 84 Z's. Then we'd have two left over. Okay, well, what we really want to do is we want to divide the 86 by three. Okay. So this doesn't turn out to help us very much, helped a little, but not all that much. We want to do a cube root. If we divide 86 by three, we get 28 with a remainder of two. This means That z to the 86 is z to the 28th cube, because that means we got three groups of 28 z's. And we multiply that by z cube squared, and we get z to the 86.
So you could even say, okay, there's a rule. I want to do a cube root, I divide that by three, find the remainder if there is one. I can say that that's a cube root of z to the 28th cube times the cube root of z squared, which is just then z to the 28th. Leave myself in the room. Times the cube root of these squared. Okay. Now, you don't see that clearly. Write out 86 Z's. <laughs> it only takes a minute. <laughs> okay. It might be a little tedious, but you can live with it for a minute. Wow. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So we good? Okay, so now when I see this, what do I do? I say that's four times the cube root. Oh well, I can divide eleven by three and I get three with a remainder of two. So that would be the cube root of x cubed cube times the cube root of x squared. Now, the cube root of y to the ninth is y cubed. I'm going to assume we understand that because it works out. Three groups of three. And of course, if I divide nine by three, that tells me how many groups of three I've got. Okay, now I probably didn't use the best examples. Uh, sometimes the cube root of x cube cube, that can lead a little bit of confusion. Uh, although I don't think that gave you too much trouble. Let's look at what we do with this one. I think we've got the picture. So what we can say is, one over four is five. There's no remainder, right? So the test equals and we could do the fourth root. Okay, we could write x to the twentieth is x to the fifth to the fourth, or x to the fourth to the fifth. Well, we want to write it as a fourth power or something since we're taking the fourth root. So we divide by four because that's a root we want to take and we get five. So we know there are five roots of four axes. And it's illustrated that. So that means we got x to the fifth. Raised to the fourth power. Which means we've got x to the fifth because the fourth root of a fourth power is just whatever that thing is. Okay. It's this again because x to the fifth to the fourth equals x to the twentieth. Okay. Now let's try.
Israel is actually the 17th. You see what you get. Okay, now everybody's either got it or is about to get it. Let's make sure I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. And what I'm going to say is, first of all, and I, I think everybody sees it, you see that you can do three groups of x to the fifth, which will give you x to the 15th, leaving you x squared. Okay, so most of you did that. I'm not sure what the intermediate steps were in some cases. In some cases, I did see them. Okay, but let's see how you would go about doing this with just the numbers and then see why it works. Again, what did it start here? I started by dividing this by this. So, if I divide 17 by five, I see that there are going to be three groups of five. Okay. So that's. That's right, that's three groups of five with two left over. So that means I can write this as fifth root of and I said this wrong. There could be three groups of five with two left over. But what we want to get is five groups of three with two left over, right? So that would be a group of three is an x cubed. So that's x cubed to the fifth times x squared. And you can check out the powers. x cubed to the fifth is going to give you five groups of three x's. It's going to give you 15 of them. And x squared gives you two more, and that's 17. You got that picture, you got that visualization. And then here's the arithmetic. It's gotta be a little more careful now. I started to write about wrong and it didn't work. So okay. Now you can do the same thing. You need to recognize when it works and when it doesn't, but I can write this then as the fifth root of x cubed to the fifth. And we know that now we'll take the fifth root of the fifth power. We get the thing, which is x cubed, and that times the fifth root of x squared. So that's x cubed times the fifth root of x squared. And everybody either wrote that down quickly or was right on track to write it down. Okay. The key you want to see because it is it. I didn't get that far in everybody's paper. Is you want to separate this out now into two fifth roots? Okay. Factor it like this, and then it's clear how you write it out. Okay. Now let's do one that has a number inside here. Let's say we have the cube root of thirty-two x to the seventh y to the fifth. You want to write thirty-two as its prime factorization. And the key when you have a number here is to do the prime factorization. You keep dividing by the smallest number you can until you can't divide anymore. So what I can do is I come down here, I'm gonna write it here. Well, I'll do it here for a while. 32 is two times 16. Right, 16 by 2, that's 2 times 8.
So when I break it down, everybody understand what I'm doing? I divide 32 by two and I get 16. So 32 is two times 16. And then two times, well, 16 divided by two is eight. So 16 is two times eight. Eight divided by two is four. So I have two times four. Four divided by two is two times two, okay? I kept dividing by the smallest possible number. And now I see a 32 is two to the fifth. So I can write this out as the cube root. Two to the fifth times x to the seventh times y to the fifth. Now see what you can do with that. Okay, so you can write this this way. And then of course, we can split this into three cube groups. And we pretty much know what to do with those. You can just treat the two like you would an X, a Y, or a Z, and group the twos just like you would group the X's or group the Y's. Okay, well, we're about out of time, so I'm going to finish this last one. Um, everybody's on track, except maybe there's a little confusion about this cube root of two to the fifth, but cube root of X to the seventh. comes out the cube root of x squared cubed, that gives you six of the x's, and then times an x. And then the cube root of y to the fifth. Well, y to the fifth is y cubed times y squared. Now, when you get to the two to the fifth, you're going to want to write that as the cube root of two cubed times two squared. It's the same way you did the y to the fifth. If you got five of these, you got five of these. If you got five of these, you're going to do a y cubed times a y squared. So you take the cube root of y cubed, do the same thing with the twos. So just a Write out every possible step. That gives you the cube root of two cubed times the cube root of two squared times the cube root of x squared cubed. And I'm going to have to move a little bit of this, but I think we got that down. Okay, then times the cube root. of y cubed times the cube root of y squared. We write all that out. And then we know the cube root of two cubed is two. Cube root of two squared is just the cube root of two squared. We can't take the cube root of anything inside of there. Uh, then it's times x squared. Cube root of y cubed is y, and then it's the cube root of y squared. And now we can just write 2x squared y, these, and then times the cube root of 4. times the cube root of y squared. I do cube root of four because two squared is four. And then finally, I can multiply these two cube roots. 
Can I have the cube group for a wash class? Yeah, you got questions on that? Stick around. We've got another class coming in five minutes, but uh, glad to glad to talk about it till they get here.